Welcome back to HGC North America. We've got superstars and we've got Neventic, but it's just, you know, it's like we have a whole group of superstars and then in fact we have the team Neventic. That is not it, how it, I meant it, and you know it. That's how it sounds like. <laughs> that's too good. Superstars from now on just makes everybody else look like whoever they're playing is just, we have this team and then we've got the bad one just because like everybody else is superstars but their opponents at this time. <laughs> That's Maybe good. they did that on purpose, they did. picking their name. That is just good old bamboozling. <laughs> that was very well done. I've never thought about that until now. I'm sorry. It just hit me. <laughs> it was all in the phrasing. Yeah, it was. I meant that. Yeah. <laughs> okay, superstars, though, they are up 2-0 over Neventic. We've already talked about mindset-wise. Probably not the greatest for Neventic, but we have seen them bring it back before. Slow starters. Yep. They claim it themselves. They did this versus Tempo. They did. Against, you know, best team in North America, the one they yet to be able to lose. They lost the first two, won the next two, and took game five. Was insanely close. So there is a moment. Do they have it? I don't know. I'm torn. I personally don't feel that way. Game number one was, again, Zuna not on a carry, and then losing has got to hurt their mentality. Well, let's see where we're going to go, because Battleground plays an important part and can maybe even give us a, a little glimpse into the mindset of Neventic. Do they feel like... They need Battleground pick at this point because Battlefield of Eternity is still up if they want to go there. That would nope. be, yeah, that would be crazy. If they pick Battlefield of Eternity, uh, just because, again, how vocal they've been with the first pick, I guarantee at this point, when things, you know, hit the rock, Zuna's like, we need first pick, already thinking about, you know, what heroes they can be able to get on to be able to turn the tides. And Superstars is doing an amazing job, though, at picking maps that Neventic can get just, you know, out macro. Neventic has never been an objective map. They're just, you know, ever since, you know, Bob Ross Fan Club, they've been up in your face, team fight compositions. That is what they excel at. And maps like Tomb, max like Towers, those are where they struggle. Right, but versus Tempo, in the same position, being down two maps, they did opt for Battleground right. Choice and at that exact PoE. point, and they went to PoE. And slaughtered and changed the entire tide, so that's a good point. But they didn't want to do it here, so maybe just feeling like it comes down to drafting a little bit differently, playing a little bit differently, and they can still get the win by opting into first pick. Let's see what they want to ban here, Dredd. Medivh. First ban Medivh, I believe. I think that's, well, I, you know, they don't, I don't think you can expect the superstars to be able to pick Medivh in their first two picks. So maybe wait until the back half, you know, of the draft here. Uh, if, if the superstars picks Medivh in their only two slots before the secondary ban phase, I do think Neventic should be able to punish that, um, that high in prioritization. Ooh. Or just, raw panic here with the Medivh ban saying they aren't going to have the tools to be able to deal with it. I expect Tassadar to still be the ban here. I agree. Although it's so funny, again, to see where he is at here. In North America. In North America versus Korea. Yeah, there, you know, Tassadar is not the only anomaly. It's just uh, the one for this patch, at least so far. If you guys have not looked at, you know, some of the drafts from all other parts of the world, uh, I strongly suggest you should. You know, it's really fun to be able to see uh, this and that from here and there, whether it be Chromie from Europe or, you know, the Tomb of the Spider <laughs> Queen Dreams that they used to be able to build on this map with solo support Tassadar or, you know, China with the stitches there to left and right. Korea, you know, they they keep things a little bit more uh, varied, but not crazy than most other regions. Superstars lock in a Gul'dan band. All right, so then Neventic comfortably just insta-locks Tassadar or do they wait? If they take Tassadar, then Superstars I, if they gets do Vala and what? From order. Uh, if, uh, so I think, okay, with the Gul'dan band out, they pick up Vala and then they move towards... Warrior? Vala variant. Ooh, see... And then ban another Warrior versus Neventic. But it won't work the same way because Neventic has two more... I think they just Vala Ragnaros for now. I think that if Ragnaros complements this map enough that I like to see him high. Deny the Vala for the Vala Ariel Tassadar uh, trio. Vala, or Tass has been picked up, Gul'dan banned out, so there's no, you know, uh, super hope magnet opportunity when it comes to the draft into this game. Now that Gul'dan's out, and if they pick up the Vala here. It could also be Vala Mal. Oh, okay, Vala Ragnaros. Now, Tass, or Neventic, excuse me. Uh, we'll move into the Malfurion because they're finally going to be able to get their hands on it here. Game number two didn't look too good. And then I'm guessing the Malfurion and Varian, I think, is where they're going to move in this because it allows kill potential. They go with the Sonya and the Varian instead. Tassonia kicking it old school. Wow. Hey. And it. that Sonya skin is the best. Sonya Super skin. Sonya. Oh, oh, so good. Superstars now. 
What do they want to ban? They're kind of in a weird position, but they will have the next picks afterwards. So they're going to ban Rhaegar, which lends me to think that they'll be picking up Malfurion in that next rotation. Uh, what do you want? There's no way they get away with this. Neventic just bans Malfurion. With the, with the Rhaegar ban. Does that put Neventic in a scary spot no. for their own support, though? Uh, see, no more than banning the Malfurion. So the Rhaegar ban is like, hey, look, you aren't going to ban the Malf, then you uh, d don't let it through. But it doesn't hurt Neventic. They don't want Malfurion. Maybe for kill potential in the four, but they have Task, they have Sonya. That's true. Like, all they're looking for is a burst healer. They don't They don't need Malfurion. They don't probably even want Malfurion, to be honest. It might be one of the weaker healers. So by Superstars banning out the, you know, the one of the bursts, it, I just, I don't look at that as a cripple. I, I think even if Inventic banned out the Malfurion, that would be a better play for them than it would be for Superstars. Mm, good point. 16 seconds, nothing even hovered for Neventic. Yeah, I, I, it's a mix between, is this a trap if we ban Malfurion to, you know, is that the biggest problem that we're worried about? Is Malfurion the most value? Is it something like a Johanna? Yeah, it's a banned out. Yeah, I, that, that was so weird to see that. So now Superstars is gonna pick a support. It's probably going to be Karzim, just purely on the fact that he's the next most common burst support But to no respond. cleanse. All right, so this is where it gets really weird. Neventic doesn't even have to pick. Yeah. Okay, that makes more sense there. Moving into the Morales, moving into the uh, Zarya. I was going to say, because if they do not pick Morales, if Neventic picks Morales, their comp just got terrifying. Now, what support does Neventic get? Uh, they're they're going to go with Karzim is going to be their pick. Uh, Uther is a thing, but that's the next most appealing. Morales off the table. Ariel is a potential if they had a magnet, but again, with Gul'dan and Vala off the table, unlikely to see them go that direction. Plus, it just doesn't work well with Sonya uh, for the most part. What are they going to get as they're ranged? Tychus? Uh, yes, I'm going to guess it's going to be the Tychus. It also might be a Li Ming. True. Uh, but I, I think Tychus would probably be the safest route that we see them move into, uh, especially into the Zarya. Pairs but well with Tass as well as Sonya. Yeah, I, th I think it's gonna be I think it's gonna be the Tychus, and then they have to consider the support. They also don't have a solo though, so they might go like a Dahaka. No, oh, they can't. Or excuse me, I forgot about the Sonya. She's a solo, so it is gonna be the Karzim, and it is gonna be the Tychus. Last pick for superstars though. What is this going to be? Probably a warrior. I don't think that they will run Zarya by herself. Diablo? No Johanna. Oh. What about Johanna though? What about Johanna though? I don't. I didn't want to see the Johanna. I but it's Stray. But it is. Yeah, it, it's uh, it's one of her best maps. Like there's a lot of butts. It just. It j uh, it's, okay. So when looking at the compositions. Uh, you have the Sonya under the bottom lane. It's going to be Tychus, Tassadar, Varian. Not the best wave clear overall. So the Johanna is good in the sense that Johanna will be able to complement the wave clear and not be able to die as much to the potential kill composition. Just overall, when looking at Sonya specifically, she doesn't really do much to be able to peel off of that at all. Uh, you know, she might be able to save one person, but overall, Sonya into a weak front line is the dream. She will not only smash into so or excuse me into Johanna's face like traditionally like just if you're up there, but if you get onto the back line, you have to use everything for Johanna to be able to get that peel. And th it's not like Sonya's the only threat, so it makes that even more scary, you know, to really be able to see that uh, Johanna pick up. But if a huge blind hits, it hurts Tychus and Sonya. Yeah, it, it's going to come down, I think, to how much Sonya can get off of the whirlwind, and that's why we're seeing Sonya re-emerge into the meta after she was hibernating for so long is the fact that her whirlwind damage got increased the amount that she heals off of whirlwind got increased and then life funnel at 13 got increased to the point that you are healing a lot my friends whenever you use whirlwind on some heroes who's gonna play sonia tomster is it i think so all right I, i'm just curious i wanted to hear before because i it, i'm i just have a we'll see we'll see what they play and okay. i'll talk about it a little bit more uh when we get into the game Looking at superstars, probably a hosty playing Zarya and then Faye on Vala, and that would put uh, Stray playing Johanna and Goku on Ragnaros. We'll see if that's the case. We're ready for game number three on Tomb of the Spider Queen between Ventic and superstars. So the reason I am looking so heavily at who is going to be on to what is, okay, so Tomster is going to play. I... All right, so Zuna's going to be, in fact, he's going to be on the Tychus, and we are going to see Tomster is going to be playing the Sonya. 
Because even though that does fill the roles, I just, I was 100% confident there is no way you see a world where Zuna does not fill that, uh, the Tassadar role, especially after game one. I'm just looking at from knowing Zuna, being able to play with him for, uh, I don't even remember how long it was, like the eight months that we ended up playing with him, uh, to not be on that carry. And I know he loves Tassonia, and I very much felt like he might even be able to convince Thompson to move on to the Tassadar and he'd be the Sonya himself. But in fact, Big Impact's gonna be on the Tassadar. That was what I was worried about, because if that happened, that shows how big the mentality is fallen for Nementic if they end up putting uh, Zuna on that side. Yeah, Biggie instead, though, this is the first time we have seen him play Tassadar within HGC. So still, Zuna is not playing Tass, and we got something else instead. There's a condemn to stop Whirlwind. We'll keep an eye on how both Sonya and Tassadar, this being the first time we're seeing both of them in North American HGC yet, are building. But Tassadar is going to be going for the Globe talent, and on this battleground especially, um, getting Kadarian Resonance, getting more mana out of your region globes, as well as trying to build into having what used to be Kala's embrace, embrace and even a better version of that once you can get 40 globes. Uh, it's a good battleground since you can rotate so much between lanes and get double the region globes. Yeah, you pretty much just ask your team to be able to save the globes with the amount of value you get there. Uh, uh, the aggression here onto bottom, the slow is going to be able to only enable Sonya to be even stronger of a hero. Uh, so Tassadar going more supporty, confirming the kill there onto the bottom is going to be four members of Naventic, while the rest of Superstar's pressure on towards top. Looking at the talents, though, one thing I do like that we've seen, Superstars, I think Hosty, uh, I'm, I'm, I'd be slightly wrong about this, but overall, Hosty is one of the only Zarya's in NA that seems to consistently move into uh, the level one talent maximum with the maximum charge. charge. Mm -hmm. And I just, I personally think it, it's, it drastically outweighs, you know, moving into the typical uh, Q build that we see out of members in the four-man onto this map, so I really like that change. Do you still like it even with the nerf on it, getting 15 energy instead of 20 out of globes? Yes. I, I don't think the globes is necessarily that much. Personally, I just think that the level one grenade is infinite overhyped. Mm -hmm. It just doesn't really provide too much to the situation. I, I personally would almost always like moving into uh, the seeing of somebody move into with the uh, maximum charge, but then also feel the heat. Talking about feeling the heat, though, is going to be superstars as they end up losing one. Zuna's on retreat. Meteor is going to confirm the kill there with Goku. As the grenade, not enough as the heal comes out there for Kenma. So a trade here, two for one, still in favor on kills for Naventic so far into the game. Tassadar still moving into that enabling. And suddenly this game is going to be very difficult to be able to kill the Sonya because, in fact, she will always have pretty much a 25 armor shield on her. Different build for Johanna, too, seeing from Stray than something like how Fury would build, getting Regen Master. But it is Tomb the Spider Queen. We already had that discussion for Tassadar as well. But then Amplified Healing at level four, not going for uh, Laws of Hope, which we see a lot more from uh, Fury. So it will have his own health regeneration from Laws of Hope, but getting more healing out of Lieutenant Morales, which when you know that she's paired with Lieutenant Morales, that'll be less of the healing beam overall to try to get Stray's health bar all the way to the top. B-Kid's going to be able to clear this out. The team's questioning if they have enough to be able to get a turn in here. Six have only managed to be able to be turned in here for Naventic. Uh, 45 in their hands, 50 on their opponent's side. So both is sitting around that perfect number to be able to confirm the turn in. Uh, but the wave player on the side of Superstars has really paid off, at least so far, into this top lane. Or top two lanes, I guess. More top and mid here. Yep. The 1v1 rages on in the bottom between Ragnaros and Sonya. <laughs> it rages on. Rages on between uh. the two. Both teams trying to get to their level seven talents. Uh, focus attack for Sonya. Looks like uh, the armor, giving armor after the plasma shield breaks, Kala's light over giving increased lifesteal. It seems to be the consistent pick. I think that's what we saw Snitch take as well with Zul'jin. Made a lot of sense with Zul'jin especially too, being able to give that armor so that he could maintain the health that he wanted to be at versus getting the increased lifesteal at level level four. And there's going to be the turn in here for Naventic. Webweaver is going to be pushing out. Their composition doesn't siege necessarily that well. Um, they're really good in the brawling sense, especially in open territory there with the Sonya Tastar. Uh, but the fact that they, you know, haven't picked up uh, to be able to get those 10s, number one, Sonya to really kind of thrive in that scenario. 
Uh, but then also the fact that, again, it's just very early on. All the front walls are going to be up. It's all about who can get the pressure, who can get the wave clear. And that kind of really doesn't exist here for uh, Naventic outside of maybe, you know, the Tassadar. But then moving into the support build shows that he does not have uh, that good of siege. The defense has started for Superstar. Sway jumps in, has to use Iron Skin to get back, though, as the all five members of Naventic show their faces here in the mid. But that Web Weaver is going to be cleared out extremely quickly, does not even take towers down. And Naventic with low health bars now have to make their next plan. Do they try to rotate up and assist the top weave Web Weaver? They will do that. Tassar is going to come in too, but this is going to get taken out very quickly. So overall, this defense was stellar for the members of Superstars. They lost one tower, unless they lost some maybe in bottom lane. They're still ahead in experience, and that is 50 gems down the drain for Naventic. I mean, part of that is, again, the siege on the side of, you know, Naventic's draft. The spear is going to hit. Goku has 20 gems. One more W. Doesn't matter. Izuna's got the nade there with the quarterback, and that is going to be another kill for them. That will allow them to be able to get pressure on this bottom. But yeah, it's just the, you know, Naventic's draft mix mixed with a perfect response on the side of Superstars made that first Web Weaver turn in uh, just not really that value. 33 gems have been turned in. 3 to 3 available. Warbringer comes into Iacona. The punches from Kemba are going to be able to confirm the kill here. And Sonya and the rest of Naventic gaining experience vantage. Not enough to be able to get the turn in yet. But they did. They didn't manage to get any kills on somebody with gems, though. So Superstar still has the opportunity to be able to threaten that turn. Actually, they did when they killed Ragnaros. That was, yeah, 20, was 20 gems they dropped. Yeah. But it wasn't much more with Morales. So yeah, losing Ragnaros was the end of the world. Superstars still have a lot, uh, enough gems for a turn in, but 20 gems could, they could feel the pressure from that later on as sometimes you get down to the wire and trying to get a turn in ahead of your opponents. But losing two kills did hurt for Superstars because that was the point that Naventic started to move ahead enough in experience now that Superstars have to wait for that turn in and that buys some time for Naventic to get a turn in of their own. Heroic abilities are here and where Naventic might not have gotten this because Superstars had a stellar defense, now Team Naventic have a second chance to make the siege happen. They do, but 10 is gonna be achieved here for both sides, which is a silver lining. We do see Archon was the choice. Now the siege though of Naventic got drastically uh, better with the Wrath of the Berserker and then having Archon and Draken Laser uh, for Naventic here. I expect a lot more to be able to happen. It looks like their focus is on top. Sitting in Fog of War is going to be BK. He moves in for the flank. He is scouted out, though, by the rest of Superstars. Four people for Superstars on the top, whereas there's only going to be three here for Naventic. So buying time is in the focus, or in the thought process for Naventic for now. Yeah, especially with Taika starting to work on the mid four structures moving in and a quick rotation from B Kid and Kenma will help that out faster than Superstars. Sonya is still in the bottom with their web weaver, but that'll be the first fort going down. Team Naventic get a fort, but heroic abilities are now here for Superstars. So we'll see how they want to try to set up for an engagement immediately after this web weaver phase. See how it plays out, Ken. Kenma joining Tomster. Molten Core is gonna be interrupted. Their seven-sided strike comes oh. in, confirms the kill. Onto him, very well done. Archon with the flank. Iacona is getting slowed there with every auto attack. He's pretty much getting soloed there by big impact. And that, then Hosey falls as well. That was amazing for Team Naventic to be able to tell that Goku was the only one in bottom. He was trying to go into Molten Core with a Medivac flying in too, so that immediately the flank could happen with Molten Core at the same time, so that you get the, the huge stun off of Molten Swing. But stalling him out of getting Molten Core was the huge reason why Team Naventic won that fight, and now with that, have level 13 advantage. Seven kills to one. There's no chance for a turn-in just yet, but Naventic can paint the battleground red and try to get those gems in uh, preparation for Superstars to catch up in talent tiers. Yeah, it's uh, Superstars now, for the first time almost in the series, is going to be a talent tier down from their opponents. They do, again, have enough for a turn-in still here. We'll see if they look to try and be able to get that force. But for now, we're yet to really see them truly go in a full 5 versus 5 skirmish. One thing we do have to consider is the fact that Archon is a very, very long cooldown. Uh, and that is something that should be able to be punished on the side of Superstars, uh, where the rest of their sit relatively short. Expulsion zone just to feel away for now. A little bit of fear here for Superstars not being of the same talent here. I don't think Superstars is going to have the opportunity to be able to get a turn-in. Uh, before they get to the same talent tier. At that point, Naventic will have enough for a turn-in. Uh, so Superstars really asked the question, 
is it worth, you know, maybe a risk of a skirmish on top to be able to confirm and turn in the bottom? Because I think it's very unlikely they get the fight that it seems like they're, you know, at least aspiring towards. Oh, as, uh, but they lose Zarya and they're going to lose Goku here too. That's even more gems down. Sulfur Smash will be dropped by Goku just buying time. Uh, he even used Blast Wave for movement speed, but those two kills, even if Superstars who it's not something that we see from them to be behind and want to go for that fight down a talent tier, even if they had wanted to go for that. Now, it's not even in the cards because they did lose those two kills. Nefentic finding members of Superstars out knowing that this is maybe the one time that Superstars could try to get a turn in and being able to deny that consistently and almost get another turn in of their own. Nefentic is playing this extremely well. Yeah, Nefentic is, you know, Doing so much right here, four gems left, and they're going to be able to confirm a turn in. May even go for a boss, Sonya, with Tassadar. Um, you know, with, especially with maybe the new and improved version of both of them. Uh, they, back in the day, have always had so much boss threat by themselves. Sonya's very comfortable taking the boss on her own. Uh, but more than anything with that Tassadar shield, it's like, you know, the Toronto Butcher duo. You don't have to really commit anything or risk anything if they wanted to do that here um, with their next turn in play forcing superstars in a bad spot but for now it's all about the turn in and Sray tries to be able to get the channel here keep in mind so pure smash now off cooldown there it's going to be used the taunt comes in that is a lot of damage expulsion zone splitting the team as we do see most of the makes it past here at the split sonya spinning to win comps are burnt the arc or excuse me big impact burnt the archon he does not have another e for a couple of seconds here can they confirm the kill in fact he will be able to make it now out there with kenma Getting, you know, the heals in Nade is going to put Beacon into a terrible position. But in fact, they are on full retreat. So B-Stars held their own in that fight. Yeah, Superstars didn't get any kills from that, but they did buy time. And the positioning over this turning point in the top, a lot of heroic abilities have been used on either side. And both know it. It's really down to taunt. If Nevinta can get that, Wrath of the Berserker will be up fairly soon. But Iacona is the one who's in trouble. Gets a shield from Hosty just in time. Oh. Goes into Medivac barely in the nick of time. Does anybody else join him? There's an expulsion zone. Tomster was zoned oh, away. Goku Varian goes too. down. Here goes Iacona and Goku and all of Superstars make it out just before Nevinta gets uh, their level 16 talents. I have no idea how they were able to survive that fight. Very well done for Superstars. The micro in and out, dashed back and forth. Now it's going to be the Blessed Shield into the Sulfur Smash Ken, or excuse me, Kenma and Zuna. Now both end up falling. This is going to be a turn in play and a huge momentum swing now for Superstars as it looks like they're going to be able to capitalize and be able to start the boss here. A little bit of miscommunication there, but they in fact are going to be able to make that happen. Okay, Expulsion Zone is up in 7 seconds, 25 seconds until Tychus or Karzim are back. So even being down 16 talent here, Superstars understood exactly where the fight needed to happen and went for the boss. They'll get the boss and a turn in. This is a huge turning point for Superstars. And this is something that we have not seen too much them be able to Ever. do before. I, I not at least in HCCNA for the yeah. most part, yes. This is, they, a, is huge for Superstars. Yes, they are a team that does well when ahead. And that's kind of where, you know, there's a big old period right there, is uh, they do well when ahead. We are, we've almost never seen a game where they fall behind, especially as severely as they did against Eventic, and then be able to turn this around. So very well done showing these adjustments here. We'll see if it continues. Seven-sided strike was already used there. Expulsion zone is going to be able to split. Avatar, or, or excuse me, not Avatar, but in fact, uh, having that Archon. Mm -hmm. Big Impact used Archon aggressively one time with that very big flank and got a lot of value. It's not a casual cooldown to just kind of, you know, drop around there. It's still very, very long cooldown. Seven sides, or excuse me, Sulfur Smash used there uh, on two. Kenma to be able to try and get the kill, and they were not able to do so. As Superstars now looks towards this top keep, as Web Weaver on bottom still barely alive. Are they going to be able to pick up the keep here? Dragon Laser Drill has been used for defense, trying to burn down the boss as fast as possible. The Web Weaver behind it is also very low. Superstars is continuing to put pressure onto the keep. They do not want to give it the keep for free. The keep gets picked up. There is a medevac going yeah. down. Goku's gone. Uh, they're going to jump away and go straight to the bottom lane to escort this web weaver here in the bottom two. Superstars have finally broken the prison that Nevintic had them in their own base. They're up ahead in experience. They have level 17 and can start moving toward 20. 
This is a great feeling for them to be able to get the first keep in the game after all of the pressure that Noventic put on them. Interesting that we see this coming out from Big Impact there on the Tassadar. So in fact, he did go with the Globe Talent at one, but then moves into the Double W at 16. Uh, we did see in Europe when we saw Tassadar picked up that at 16, then moving into everybody hit by the uh, Tassadar's W. Sy Cyanic Storm, in fact, is going to have 25 less armor, meaning 25% damage. If you take the Psionic Echo, personally, at least from what I've gotten to play on him so far, I can't help but feel like I prefer the level one. I thought this was going to be more, you know, it's enabling Sonya. Enable Sonya, disable their shields, uh, reduce their, increase their damage taken, and Sonya's going to have a heyday there uh, with that. But instead, he's going to go with the Psionic Echo. Going to benefit the wave clear. Oh, bless the shield. So fear smash. Oh, and the Condemn. Perfect into that two by Sray. Karzim goes down. Dimensional Shift has to be used by Big Impact just to get away. As we can see, Big Impact did finish half of Kadarian Resonance, so now half of the shielding will persist. Still has not finished Adun's Wisdom. Needs, I think, one more takedown in, in order to be able to fit, close out that quest talent, too, at level 7. And that will give him more of a vision radius, too. There's Expulsion Zone. BK is zoned away from the rest of the team, but did find Sray to be able to dive into. Can he still get out of here, though? Goku's the one who's in trouble. Being healed up barely by Lieutenant Morales, plus Safeguard it is down now, but a great gren grenade. Great Grenade is kind of hard to say. Iacona pushes away Tomster and keeps everyone alive. So Iacona's Fierce Bash playing, and Seven-Sided Strike are just apparently the hardest ones for me to be able <laughs> yeah. to figure out. So I think you're doing fine. Top Wave Reaver, though, uh, in fact, is going to be threatening for there with two, three Catapults now on the court of Nementic. Somebody's going to have to back out, which is going to lead to a, uh, you know, a ridiculous amount of pressure here towards the mid-keep. Molten Core is going to be dropped as well, so lowering the threat, uh, threat of lethal, but making this keep a lot safer of a decision on the side of Superstars for now, and they're going to be able to get 20 talent here. Team Neventic, their window is slowly closing. They had a lead for a small time. Good heal is going to be there. Plus, the chill ended up not connecting. Faye is very low onto the HP. Seven side strike does land. Will Faye be able to back out here with Iacona? No Molten Core to be able to get the peel here as Goku is trying to, you know, get rid of Tomster and just Kenma onto his backline. Tomster isolated. Is the kill going to happen? In fact, it will, but it's <laughs> in the back. Posty <laughs> is, uh, that was a one versus three, and he took out two. That is, I I'm telling you, Tomster, that healing is insane once you get Life Funnel at 16. But the rest of Superstars were working on bringing down everyone else from Deventic, even if they couldn't get kills on Sonya. They got the kill on Beacon, on Tychus too. And Superstars, when they needed it, came back in this game being behind. But better than that, they just took a 3-0 victory in this series. Something, you know, we can't even say that Temple Storm was able to do against Deventic. Very well done for superstars that they did so much right so much you know a little bit of innovation but also you know thought process like the johanna pick even in that last game got a lot more value on the lack of wave clear existing on the side of noventic they were able to capitalize on that and more importantly than i think anything in the series has to be when they got behind absolutely they made decisions to win the game that is the number one criticism you and i have had we watch the vods we talk about it all the time and it's just when they're up it, it's it's Perfect. all it, you know Pretty. rainbows just coming out everywhere they're like we're winning the game <laughs> it's going and then when they get behind they go guys what happened you know there's like team who's gonna make the play to turn this around until the game's over and finally even if it you know they took the risk and more importantly were successful with it but even taking that risk was huge for Super Stars. It wasn't even like it was Goku or somebody just finding the right pick that got them back in the game e either. It was a concerted effort of the team to move in when they had that one shot to stop the turn-ins. And that was everything that they were able to do that. That is so incredible for us to see after watching this team yeah. that they've been able to work on those types of mistakes. And now 3-0 over Noventic. Let's hear from one of our victors Hey, Sray, congratulations. You just took out Neventic. Thank you so much. I really appreciate it. It was a hard-fought uh, series, at least for the last one. Yeah, but in the end, 3-0, um, especially that last game. Tell me what the comms were like when you guys were down uh, around level 13 when you had to go in and, and go for that fight. I'll be honest. They, they, weren't, they weren't too good. And that's We were literally talking about that just at the end. Uh, I was like... Can, come on guys we just need to we have i think i thought we had a really really good comp i thought we won the bot lane really well and like we'd have a good comp for four man rotating and all we need to do is literally not get picked and we destroy team fights if we just as long as we go even even if we do well early then we we'd snowball that game so 
for me personally, I just gotta you know stay optimistic for the, the, the whole series, which is obviously something that the whole the rest of the team was doing. But for me personally, I gotta work on. Yeah, it was very impressive play coming out from you guys. The fact that you were able to be able to get a three over Neventic, uh, you know, is something that like we said earlier, uh, teams like Temple Storm even really kind of uh, struggled to be able to do. But on your guys's on the second game of the day, we saw the Braxis hold it, how it get picked up. Like when when it comes to the Rexar. What are your thoughts, uh, like, when playing with, when playing against? Like, what are the thoughts when it comes to Rexar with the new version of Rexar, I guess, is the better way to put it? I just think Rexar is extremely strong right now. Um, and a lot of teams, like Neventic, um, they haven't played it, a lot of it, and they haven't played a lot against it. Uh, so it's it's really, it's not even something that's that niche anymore. I just think it's a really, really strong pick. It got it got a lot of buffs. Just that, that wave clear at level 1 really means that you can just completely dominate your lane. I think it's a, a really strong pick. That's awesome. Sray, you guys have a tough weekend. You have your next series tomorrow, and it's going to be versus B Step. So tell me about what you guys are, you know, not any specific plans, but how you're feeling that that matchup is going to go. Uh, I think we're feeling optimistic. Uh, B Step is obviously a good team, and they always do, they're one of the teams that do better in tournament settings. So we don't want to um, overrate ourselves, but we're feeling optimistic going into it, especially obviously coming off today. I think that um, the last couple of weeks we weren't on our game, and a lot of that was on me, but just we're coming together as a team. Um, we fixed our draft. I think our draft was really well all three games, and I think that as long as we do a good draft, we're just as good or better than any other players in HTC. Well, I would echo that. You guys played a fantastic series. Uh, any shout outs? Uh, well, shout out to my team, obviously. Um, if you want to follow me on Twitter, you can follow me at Stray Hots, and I'm going to be streaming after this, so you can follow me on, on Twitch at Stray Lol. Great. Well, thank you. Congratulations and good luck versus B Step tomorrow. Thank you very much. See you guys. Superstars keeps their dream alive, too. Importantly, that match was so important because how the standings, and we're going to look at them in a, in a second, actually, we're going to look at them right now, how these standings have gone down. It is very much almost anyone's game for that third place spot. And even second place too. Tempo Storm is not even, hasn't clinched that victory just yet, but they're looking very, very good to do so. Yeah, and, and we talked about the importance, you know, of that Gale Force versus Superstars even in the past when it came up. And it was exactly the scenario, you know, like, is it going to be a tough moment? Because Gale Force, every victory really matters. And Gale Force has got those couple of like, we could get knocked out of this, and so they need to make sure that they are, you know, are very successful with their gameplay, and they're going to be able to take them out. And that's why we try to put that much emphasis onto those games, because even though at first you're like, I don't know, we got some time left. It's like, ah, oh, when you really look at the road these teams have, you have about this series to win, and then you cannot risk the other ones. Uh, otherwise, you're going to be knocked out of, you know, going to Katowice. Especially because when it comes down to tied standings, it's who beat whom exactly. in that. And so from Superstars and Gale Force Esports now, we do know Gale Force beat them, but it's not done yet. There are still plenty of series left, and it's going to be anybody's game. Let's take a look at tomorrow's schedule and see what heroes we have in store for you going into Saturday. In 